And welcome back to the 58th New York Film Festival. I'm Eugene Hernandez, director of the festival. Thrilled to be seated, seated here digitally, of course, uh, for this conversation after you've all just had a chance to see the exceptional new film, I Carry You With Me. Congratulations again, Heidi Ewing. Thank you so much. We have, uh, we have about 20 minutes and I thought that um, what we'll do uh, for folks who are watching at home or folks who might be listening to this on a podcast is, um, is let you uh, welcome a few folks to our, to our virtual stage. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions about sort of the, the origins of the film, but uh, why don't you take a moment to, uh, to welcome folks. All right, well, I'm extremely excited to introduce probably for the first time to most audiences in New York, the incredible actor who plays the role of Ivan, Armando Espitia, from Mexico Hi. City. Yay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and I'm very, very excited to introduce, uh, right here in Brooklyn, the real Ivan and the real Gerardo. In the, Ivan in the black and Gerardo in the black. Hi. Hola, hello, how are you? <laughs> Welcome. It's so great to see all of you. I'm going to start with a couple of questions for Heidi, but we're going to incorporate everyone into the discussion uh, very quickly. Um, Heidi, I, I feel like, uh, or I felt like when I when I first watched the film earlier this year, I felt like I was, um, I felt like an insider because uh, you had you had told me uh, this is years ago. You had told me um, about Ivan and Gerardo's story, um, just little bits. Um, and I know this is something you've been working on for such a long time. So if you don't mind, if you could share a little bit with our audience about how you came to know these guys and, and just sort of the, before we talk about how you made the movie and, and, and how you adapted their story to the screen, um, maybe just tell first you and then, and then Yvonne Gerardo, just how you guys all uh, first met and connected. Well, like all uh, good New Yorkers, uh, Yvonne Gerardo and I met in a bar. <laughs> We met in a bar, my local bar. Uh, I was actually working on Jesus Camp a million years ago, and they were working down the street at Bread, I think, in Tribeca. And we would go to this watering hole at night, and we would drink and we would dance and sort of like unwind after. And work. what year was this, just for context? Oh man, we met in like 2005, 2006. Yeah. 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 And um, so they came so in. You're just hanging night. out. You're just hanging just out hanging together. Out. And and they were friends with the owner uh, of the bar and he introduced us and I like to speak Spanish. And uh, I don't know, Gerardo was very funny. And I was like, this guy's trouble. He was like very teasing immediately. <laughs> and like, he's like, you know, Ivan was like this great dancer, but like much more, you know, uh, reserved. And we just, I was like, these are, they were my new friends. And uh, it started like that. And um, actually they came to my wedding in 2007 in Michigan and we grew to be good friends. But um, it turns out I didn't know so much about my friends. And, um, and when they finally told me their story, it was at Sundance in 2012, I had Detropia and they'd come to support the film. And we were at Pizza Noodle on Main Street, also drinking, I guess. And uh, they told me their life story. And um, I didn't know that Ivan had a son. I didn't know um, how difficult it had been for Ivan and Gerardo to come here. I didn't know so many things. And I thought, how can I be friends with these gentlemen for so long and, and, and not have asked more questions? Have not, how come I didn't know more? Um, I'm a documentary filmmaker. And I was just so blown away by the story, which is an incredible story of not just love, but also, um, you know, migration and sacrifice and um, dreams. And it, it, was, it was such a brave thing that they did coming to New York, not knowing anyone and then becoming very successful restaurant owners and Ivan is a chef. And I just couldn't get it out of my head, I couldn't shake it. I, I was up all night thinking about it. And I wrote myself a text on the airplane home from Park City the next day and it was called The Mexican Love Story. And I wrote down everything they had said to me that I could remember, it was so late at night. And that's how the idea started. And I was afraid to call them and say, is there a film here? I mean, I, I shouldn't be making films about my friends, but I think there's a special movie here. And they said, maybe there is. <laughs> and, and that's how it all began. So it really began the idea, I have to say, in 2012. 
Uh, well, so then following up on that, Yvonne and Gerardo, uh, thank you for sharing your story with Heidi, because if you hadn't, you wouldn't have shared it with the rest of us, or Heidi, all of you wouldn't have been able to share it with the rest of us. But maybe you could just tell me about that early conversation when your friendship suddenly pivoted and, and, and Heidi, your friend Heidi says to you, oh, maybe there's a movie here. What, what, how did you react to that originally? What did you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it was a, a, a big surprise. You know, like we, we, we say, how, how the life of two Mexicans in New York City can be a, in a movie, right? So it was like a big surprise, but uh, we know her like as a great person, you know, we trust on her and we know how professional she is in what, wherever she, she does. And then that, that was how become more comfortable to tell a real story to her. Right? Mm -hmm. That was like, I don't know, Ivan. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's exactly the same. It was like, uh, Surprise in, in, in some moment, like how, how my own life, my personal life, like she said, she just doesn't know I was uh, a kid. She doesn't know um, many things, you know, personal things. Uh, when she started talking about doing a documentary about her life, I was a little nervous, a little uh, shy about all this situation because, you know, many um, things we cannot share talk. easily. We cannot right. share with people like immigrant things, like, like talking about border, talking about family, talking about like uh, um, economy. Yeah, it's not easy. It's in not... Mexico, in our country. Why we decided to move to New York? So was many things we try to don't explain, don't to talk with people, but with her, it was like very, very, very um, close relationship. So that's why we open. Yeah, we open the, our, our life and we tell her this story. In, as a follow-up to that, in the last you know, four years in this country, it's only become harder to, um, to, be, to be an immigrant, to, to identify in, in this way. Um, I wonder how you thought about the risks to yourself or to your family or just to your, to your happiness, to your, to your level of comfort in, in this country the last few years in, in, in building on that decision to not only agree to continue making this film, but to, to sit in a conversation right now talking about it, presenting your life on screen. Um, I can't imagine that's something you, you haven't had to to think about or consider. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been very difficult these past four years. I mean, you know, with um, everything happening in, in US in this past for almost four years was like, um, for immigrants were more difficult. It is more difficult. So to take decisions, um, to stay here or go back to our own country is the biggest decision like we have to to find and to to take at some point you know and 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 we are here in the middle of all of this um, all of this situation like very hard for all of immigrants from everywhere you know it, it's it's been hard and and i don't know I don't know what else to say is we're still here, we're still fighting, we're still working very hard and just waiting if something good can happen for all of the immigrants. I'm gonna flash forward for a moment because I want to include Armando in the conversation. And sure. so in a minute, I'm gonna ask you Heidi about sort of going from the first conversation with these guys to the movie we see, and we'll talk about how you decided to approach it. But Armando, you're, as an actor, you have this opportunity to inhabit and explore the life of a real person who we're sitting here talking with right now. Um, 
And it's kind of a similar question for you about sort of not just how you learned about uh, this story, but how you responded to it when you first heard about it, but also as you were digging into this life to portray um, to, to portray a, a younger version um, of this character of this person of this human of this person, uh, how you thought about that, how you think about that now, uh, with a little bit of time also. This is going to sound great to sound crazy, but I think I'm still figuring out how I how I am connected with Ivan now. Um, I first hear about this story through our casting process. And I first met Heidi before reading the script, I guess. Um, I remember the script you sent me was in, um, one, of, one of the first uh, drafts, I guess. And it wasn't very well um, translated to Spanish. So it was a, a little bit difficult mm -hmm. to, to understand the whole story, but I knew from the beginning that it was a very powerful love story for me it was a, a love story uh, and then Heidi um, when we were actually working on the script uh, she guided me to work in a character not in a or in a real person we were we weren't based we didn't base our work in in Ivan's himself in, in Ivan's life I mean it wasn't the character in the script's character so that helped me um, to uh, yeah, to not make uh, that much expectations or to light the weight uh, upon myself. And then just meeting Ivan and Gerardo was a great experience as friends because, yeah, I'm still fascinated uh, hearing them. Um, yeah, my relationship with them is like friends now. Uh, but it's fun to uh, discover the deep connections Heidi saw in between Ivan and myself. Well, it was funny because we talked about, we didn't, I didn't want to mimic. We didn't want um, him to walk or talk like Ivan. He, he wasn't supposed to be imitating. It wasn't an imitation. Armando as an actor had an essence that reminded me of Ivan. It, it was the essence of the character. It was the melancholic nature. It was mm. the urgency at the same time. It was, there was a lot of things that he possessed that the real Ivan possesses as I see him. So I didn't want uh, Armando to meet Ivan uh, or, or um, Cristian to meet Gerardo because I didn't want that in their head. I wanted them to use the script, to use their talent and use what came inside to portray Ivan and Gerardo. And I really tried to keep them apart uh, until it was time to shoot in New York and we were almost finished. And I think in the end, that was a, the best decision. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they needed to have the real guys in their head. And this is why is, this is crazy because um, mm -hmm. I don't realize that I got this nostalgic, you said, mm -hmm. uh, in myself. But when I see, when I see Ran, I kind of realize it. I can uh, I kind of understand uh -huh. what Heidi is saying. It's crazy. <laughs> well, let me, Heidi, let me ask you to elaborate on, on not just what you were saying a moment ago, but something that the guys are also talking about, and that is just the, there's a, there's a delicate, there's a, there's a delicacy to the way you approached or the way we see these stories being um, expressed. And it's because you're using um, both actors and um, you're relying on your strength and your experience as a documentarian and weaving that together in, in, into, in, in a way that is certainly, um, certainly films do that all the time, but in this case you have uh, such a unique reality of these two guys who are so close to you you have this community of actors that you're, you're able to tap into and then you know the 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 expression of it is is such a seamless um exploration and a, a seamless story that that weaves in and out of both but but tell me about some of the original concepts the original ideas that you were sort of thinking about as you were sort of trying to figure out what you were mapping how you were going to bring the story to life 
Well, of course, my comfort zone, you know, is documentary and was documentary at the time. And so at the beginning, I started with interviewing Ivana Gerardo, and then I started uh, filming key moments in their lives. And I realized pretty quickly that I was shooting the third act of a movie. That if, if I was making a documentary, like, what about the childhood? What about Ivan's relationship with his father? What about Gerardo's relationship with his mother and father in Chiapas? What about dreams? What about like the cinematic vision that fiction can bring that documentary filmmaking has limits to? I, and I said, I can't, this is, this will not be an amazing documentary because I came too late. I needed to come when Ivan was 10. Mm. <laughs> and um, so I said, I, this needs to be a narrative. And that's scary because I don't know how to make a narrative. I've never written a movie and I've never shot a fiction. I've never worked with actors. And, um, you know, I used to be a playwright in college. That was it. And I thought, Shoo, I gotta, I guess I gotta buy final draft and try to write a movie. I mean, it was literally like, um, and I said, I, I told the guys, I, I, I continued to film with them over eight years um, and write the script at the same time. And so I was basing, in some ways, the film, of course, along their, their, their lived experience. And then came the time when I had to decide whether I was going to cast actors to play them as their older selves. And I couldn't find a reason to do it. I had beautiful, real cinema verite, intimate scenes with the real Ivan and the real Gerardo living their life. And nothing, casting an actor to play them at their age would have not enhanced it would not have enhanced the movie. I couldn't justify it. And so I said, I'm going to Ivana Gerardo, there will be documentary material, it will be the real lives, and I will find a way to integrate it. It was very difficult. My longtime editor, Enoch Sidi, um, and I structured the film multiple, multiple times. It was a nine month edit, I'll just be honest. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, a, a very, it was Herculean feat because it hasn't been done in this manner. Um, and so it was just a decision. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Um, and I feel like their presence enhances the authenticity and the beauty and the emotion of the film. Um, and so that's, that's how I ended up uh, do, making that decision. It was all very, it was like one scary thing after the next, after the next. At some point, you're so scared because everything is so new that you don't feel fear anymore because you're like, <laughs> I'm tired of being, it's exhausting. Every, everything, uh, never worked with costumes, ever. everything was so new every day. I was just like, okay. I'm bored with this scary stuff. Let's just make the movie. And that's basically what the attitude was because everything was just, it would have been overwhelming otherwise. Right. I'm thinking about, as you're talking, Heidi, I'm thinking about um, the moment, you know, maybe maybe three quarters, I, I could be wrong on the timing, you'll know, maybe three quarters of the way in when there's like this explosion all in one song where we see uh, Yvonne and Gerardo's life uh, represented in, in such a poignant way because it's suddenly this rush of images. We've been given tastes, I think, in the I have to think back to the structure, but we've been given tastes of, of uh, Armando as Yvonne and then Yvonne in you know, moments in the film where you cut back to the subway or whatever. But in that, in that song, on, if you could just sort of elaborate on sort of the creative choice of the song, the images, it all kind of just explodes, if for lack of a better word, in that moment, in such a very strong cinematic way, but also a very emotional one, for, for, for me at least. Yeah, I'm so glad you point out that moment because it's, it hasn't, it's not mentioned that often. I mean, it's, it's one of my favorite moments in the film, and basically it's around minute 85, I think, you asked. Okay. Uh, but basically it's like, it's time to go. We are catching up to real time, here we are. How do we train the audience? How do I communicate to the audience that like, we are in a new chapter? We are, I'm going to take you through, you know, 15 years of a life and we're going to land right now in New York City, right, you know. And so it had to be messy and it had to be joyful and it had to be different than the rest of the film. I was trying to communicate to the audience that we're going somewhere new. Um, and you have to do that cinematically. Um, and so it was basically many, many years of material I'd filmed with the real Ivana Gerardo. Uh, you know, sort of over time, um, and it is an explosion. And the the, the song is a I won't even call it a B side. It's a C. It's a D. It's an E side. It's an old forty five. It's called Un Dia de Tantos. Um, it's by Los Borgia. Uh, it was recorded in nineteen seventy. 
Um, we couldn't find out any information. There's no digital copy. Uh, a DJ in um, who was an expert at going through at old old you know garage band music from like the 60s and 70s. Carlos Rene, I contacted him. I listened to his side. I couldn't sleep when I was in Mexico. I was rewriting the movie every night. And I just, my cinematographer told me about this, this YouTube channel of this awesome guy with take great taste. And one night it was like three in the morning and the song played. And I was like, this is amazing. And also the lyrics for those who speak Spanish, I decided not to subtitle it. It's a special treat for people who speak Spanish because, which is a lot of the world, uh, because it really kind of talks about, you know, identity and like my black boots and my guitar and like I look myself in the mirror and it's like time to go you know it's like one one did it tantos so it has a lot of attitude and no one's ever heard the song nobody in my crew none of my actors I felt so cool because I was like oh you don't know the song <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like so I felt very cool uh and I would play it in the car and everyone's like oh that's an amazing song so it had to be this song. And so it was, everything has a great story, right? Eugene, everything that's good has a story, has a long trail. And this is one of them. And I felt like it was the explosion that the movie needed. I was also kind of switching genres and I was trying to communicate that visually to the audience. Mm. Thank you, that's a great explanation. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you were able to offer some detail on that because it is such a, such a special moment in the movie. Um, a special moment in a movie with a lot of special moments. Um, I keep looking down at my clock because I know we don't have a lot of time, but I want to give, uh, well, I'll start with Armando and then I'll, and then I'll go to Ivan and Gerardo. Um, switching gears away from this film in particular specifically, Armando, tell us what you're up to right now. What are you working on? Uh, I'd love to know just sort of where your, what your eyes are on right now. Well, not much. We're, in, <laughs> we're still in quarantine, so not much. Yes. But I'm going to be uh, releasing a movie in the Festival de Cine Morelia next month. Okay. Uh, it calls Fuego Adentro. And then we're still working with this, with this beautiful movie we have right now. And yeah, let's see what's happened with the world. So <laughs> not much now. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, similar question for Ivan and Gerardo. You know, we're introduced to to, to each of you, to your life, um, to your history and your story. Um, I think probably everybody who's just watched your film and watch your uh, this film you've made together uh, will want to know a little bit more about uh, how your lives are are going now. Um, in not just in the wake of this movie bringing attention to your life and your story but you know just uh your own your own navigation of of your life in new york versus your life back back in mexico i mean it's we're still in in quarantine we're still like um you know in the middle of this pandemic uh we're still working you know we we have restaurants and this is the most difficult moment for the restaurant industry and for so many different industries. Uh, so we still, in the whole pandemic, Ivan was working every day in the kitchen, trying to, do, to keep uh, everything alive and, and working very hard like to have uh, our employees back to work. A couple of things, you know, like thinking about our family in Mexico, um, and, and thinking about our health too here. That's the situation right now. You know. Yeah, I think, like Gerardo say, we're still working in this restaurant. Uh, the situation is very hard, but we keep going, you know, because these restaurants, uh, the expensive, the bills, the everything is the same, but there is no, uh, incomes. Uh, I have a couple ideas, you know, about my, my life or life. We don't know exactly what's going on in a couple months. You know, the election is coming soon. So we are waiting for something good for uh, millions of people. That we are waiting for a big surprise. Uh, but we're still here, we're still working, we're still doing 
good things, thinking a lot about um, people working with us, thinking a lot about our families in Mexico, and my son, um, dreaming, dreaming. dreaming <laughs> one day can cook them to so my son, my granddaughter, and this is the only thing we have to, or we can like right now, you know, like waiting for that special moment for not only for us, for up millions of people yes. waiting for the same gift. Yeah, all, all of that is like, like keep us dreaming and suffering, but with hope. One day, everything can change a little bit. And with that, we can change our so many lives in a good way. Just we need a little bit of, of, of changing of that law, like to help us to fix it. That little thing like we came to this country without papers, but with a lot of love and, and you know, and hope. Because that's why we are here, just to work and to find a better life. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Heidi, uh, you know, the guy said it so well, you know, dreams and hopes are such powerful things and it's a, it's a very difficult moment for so many people. Um, we're wrapping up here. Are you optimistic? And if so, why are you optimistic? Who's this question for? For you. Oh, for me? Final, final word. To be human is to be optimistic. We, I think we're the only creature on the planet that possesses optimism besides survival. So it's, 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 as far as I know, we, we are the only ones who possess optimism. And so I'm going to take full advantage of that. And you, you know, you make films and you collaborate with creative, loving people who believe in love and storytelling and they believe that storytelling makes, makes a difference, that it matters. So I, of course I have hope and optimism because I've met hundreds and hundreds of people that, that share um, these values uh, and these beliefs. beliefs. So yes, I, I'm optimistic and it's, it's gonna be, maybe it's a dark time. So uh, it's too easy to be sad. So I think we need to, adelante. Mm -hmm. The film is Te Llevo Conmigo, I Carry You With Me, which um, is playing here at the 58th New York Film Festival. I'm just thrilled that we could have the film and share it with audiences here in New York and on a virtual platform as well. Um, thank you all for spending some time today to talk about it. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Eugene. Thank, thank you, so much you. For the festival thank you for showing it. Congratulations. Take care. Gracias.